Hi guys, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and we are now in uh, Untake Headquarters in the uh, USA. And we are here with uh, this big guy. This is uh, the most guy you need to talk in, uh, in Untake nowadays. So how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much for visiting us here in beautiful Fremont. Thanks for welcoming us. Um, could you just present yourself, your company, and uh, what is here about uh, Untake? Well, um, I'm Scott Richards. I'm the Senior Vice President at Antech. I've been with the company for 14 years now. Um, Antech itself has been in business for almost 25 years. As a matter of fact, in 2011, we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary. Look forward to uh, many special things uh, for that, as a matter of fact. Um, and Antech, of course, has established itself first in the US and, and later in Europe and then around the rest of the world as the premier supplier of case, power supply, fans, and lately uh, notebook uh, uh, power and cooling accessories. Okay, cool. Uh, how many people and how many offices do you have uh, worldwide now? Oh, I always get trapped with this question. Um, I think <laughs> the total worldwide is probably around 150. Um, this Antec Fremont here, we're in the northern part of Silicon Valley. This is our world headquarters. This is where the president, the head of design and all that, uh, uh, you know, we all get together and spend most of our time and make the uh, corporate decisions. Um, but we also have an office in Taipei. We have an office in Beijing and we have uh, Rotterdam for Europe and then also a small office for Germany and Munich. Okay, cool. Um, talking about more about your your feeling about cases, uh, we see we saw so many cases, different different size. You you know the the big one that is behind us for the 900, and some new ones coming uh, again this year, and uh, maybe new one and bigger next year. The thing is, what what are you focusing more in the case PSU or it's like half and half? Well, uh, traditionally in the United States, the business has almost exactly been half and half uh, uh, PSU, or I should say North America, actually, to be, to be completely accurate, has been almost exactly half and half case PSU. Uh, roughly 40% of our business is cases, 40% PSU, and the other 20% is the accessories. Um, in Europe, Uh, we became famous first for cases, so the PSU have been, been lagging. Um, and then the rest of the world, uh, like in Japan, we have the best-selling power supply, for example, Australia, we're the number one. So in power supply, and we also do very well in cases in those markets too. So, so most markets, it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty balanced between case and power supply. And of course, uh, mobile products are becoming very important. So we've taken our expertise in power and cooling and been over the last couple of years introducing more and more uh, power and cooling products, as I mentioned, for the notebooks, netbooks, uh, et cetera. Still trying to figure out something for the iPad, though, I know. Oh, <laughs> one more iPad accessories. <laughs> um, yeah, but actually, you know, everyone going more and more to mobile world. And the only guys left with cases and PSU are the gamers, the enthusiasts, and some very low mainstream one. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about the, the community of gaming and uh, overclocking and enthusiasts in general? We love them. I mean, of course, that's our, that's our bread and butter customer, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, and of course this works on all different levels. I mean, because you have the, the true, you know, the cutting edge, uh, you know, the overclockers, the people that are really, you know, literally getting their hands dirty, uh, uh, you, know, you know, building the, the highest performance or, 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 you know, setting their benchmarks or what have you. But those people influence the whole rest of the market. And, you know, in the gaming market and the uh, enthusiast market, I mean, 3D modeling, all that. I don't think, you know, no, no matter how good notebooks get, desktop is always, you know, yeah, because of the performance of steps yeah. ahead, right? Be because that's where the, you know, all the cutting edge performance comes to first. So we don't see that market going away. Um, And, you know, frankly, uh, when people talk about the, the, the change to mobile in terms of computers, I mean, that, now that could be changing a little bit with, you know, some of the smartphones and, like I mentioned, the iPad. But, you know, it was just like if you look back five years ago, uh, what was maybe a $500, $600, you know, desktop computer has now just become a $500, $600 laptop computer. So that was never Antec's bread and butter anyway. So, the, you know, that transition... Um, 
hasn't really impacted uh, you know, our, our business in the way that a lot of people might think. And also uh, with the introduction of the and standardization in the mini ITX area, you know that presents really a new opportunity for kind of like the the low power, uh, you know, desktop scenario, you know, home theater, uh, thin client desktop, you know, for web browsing and email and that type of stuff. And that that market is actually growing. So, yeah, that's actually my next question because uh, yeah, you talked about mini ATX, it's getting more and more popular right now. But on the other side, we also have more and more uh, huge motherboard from uh, different manufacturers like yeah. Gigabyte, EVGA yes. and stuff like that. Yes. And some of them don't even fit in normal case. Yes, that's um, true. How do, you do, how do you react for that? Maybe ATX will disappear and we'll have only a huge board and very small one that needs... That could be. I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, who knows? Uh, but the other trend we're seeing is that finally after uh, uh, years, the micro ATX boards are starting to catch up in performance with the standard size ATX boards too. So, you know, you as a case company, we have to see how the market evolves. You know, these the, the, these new XL ATX or, or whatever that the different companies all have their own little uh, uh, phrase for them. But um, you, you have to be very cautious in terms of the investment that you put in for these products because, honestly, it's very expensive to introduce a new case. Uh, the tooling, most people don't realize this, but the tooling for a new case can cost around $500,000 before you've even made the first case. So you can do the math, how many you have to sell just to break even. <laughs> yeah, at least you need to but be. Or at a price people are willing to pay, at least. Yeah. <laughs> we charge $1,000 each, so we don't have to sell 500 to break even, right? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe another tough question about the special cases like that. Um, we know that some manufacturers uh, had some design cooperation with uh, other big company from cars, uh, for example. Do you plan to make something special, like teaming up with, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Boeing? <laughs> well, like well, you know, uh, I know that, s that what some of our competitors, and I, and I let the competitors talk for themselves, um, but we came out a few years ago with the skeleton. Uh, we were mentioning this before uh, we started the, the, the tape rolling here. Um, and the, the skeleton was designed 100% in-house by Antec. So I have a lot of confidence in our design team and the direction that they can go. The public may not always agree with us, but uh, you know, at least we're always throwing out new and innovative ideas. The skeleton was exactly one of those. It sold well, especially when it was first introduced, there was a built-in demand for it. And then it's kind of slowed down. But what it really did do was it forced the hand of our competitors to also come up with equally innovative um, designs and maybe that's why they had to go to car companies and stuff they might not have had the talent in-house uh, uh, that we have. I didn't say anything. <laughs> well I didn't either necessarily, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad, I mean, I mean I'm not saying that those are bad, I'm just saying I have a lot of, I'm saying the positive about Antec that we can come up with these unique innovative designs in-house. I mean, that's not to say someday we might not, who knows, I don't yeah, know. Right. Um, another question about some special cases. It's like, you know, there's more and more um, bench table because that bench table is like opener, mm -hmm. uh, opener <laughs> case. Like basically like the skeleton without the top. Right. And do you plan to release something like that? Maybe not like worldwide, but for limited edition for some overclockers because you know that you have one of overclockers working for you yes. in Taiwan. Yes, yes. Nick. So, Nick Shee. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> good guy. Uh, the thing is, do you plan to so release heard, that I kind know. of stuff? No, Nick is a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you plan to release this kind of case, maybe a limited edition? Or we've, like looked at, we've looked at modifying the skeleton to do that. Um, you know, the problem is um, uh, in, in business, you know, you always have to find the balance between how many you're going to sell, what price people are willing to pay, um, et cetera. For example, a, a, a very good example, it's not from Antec, it's, it's from another company. But a few weeks ago, one of our power supply competitors introduced a completely fanless power supply. Okay, now we were the, we actually came out with one years and years ago called the Phantom, was one of the very first in the market. So we understand the design challenges. Basically, to have a 400 watt fanless power supply, you have to over design it so much that the internal components are essentially the same as a 750 watt 80 plus gold mm. power supply, and then you have to add a lot of extra heat sinking. It's not as simple as you th uh, you know as people think. It's actually a very expensive design. So this company came out with it. They came out at a very reasonable price for what it was if you know what it takes to build it. But instantly in all the forums, people are like, oh, 400 watts for this kind of crazy price. What are these people, you know, what's wrong with them? It's because the general public 
doesn't always understand you know, what has to go into the business calculation and the design and the building of the product. So that's a roundabout way of saying to your idea, yeah, we'd love to come out. I mean, we, look, we look at new ideas all the time, but we have to sell you know, X amount to make it practical from a, a sales and marketing point of view to be able to, to introduce a product. So the answer is if we think that the market's there and that we can sell enough to, you know, to make a little money. I mean, we're not greedy, but we're also not a charity. <laughs> you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, talking about uh, PSU, uh, everyone going like more and more and more about the uh, power you can deliver with a PSU. Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan to go to race although in that game, um, rising again and again and again? Well, we're already up to 1,200 watts um, with our uh, TPQ 1200 and then the special overclockers edition as well. Um, and we have a new 1200 watt coming out um, uh, in our, high, our new high current series. So I think for the time being, <laughs> 1200 is probably about as far as we're going to go. Um, what the engineer, one of the things the engineers tell me, like for example, even to go up to 1500 watts, all of a sudden you can't draw enough current from one circuit, so you actually even have to have two power cords. Yeah. So that's a drawback <laughs> right there to people. So and also some special connectors. Uh, yes. When the first uh, 1000 uh, PSU was introduced, that was um, a very square. Yes. For a connector, and now that changed back to the, uh, the normal one, right, and right. there's some limitation also uh, about these form factors. Yeah, we, we have that on our TVQ 1200. Some people complain that it's not the standard power cord, but it has to be a special power cord to carry that much current uh, and to meet the safety rules. So right, especially and, and that's why and that's why you change the connector is because you, you, of course, you can ship the right power cord with the right connector, but you don't want end users plugging in, you know, thinking that, oh, that means if I've got the standard connector, now I can use the same connect uh, plug I use for my 500 watt power supply because they can't. That, that did not work. <laughs> oh, that will work, but... But it not work be, right, it could be dangerous. It could, could potentially be dangerous, yeah. <laughs> my last question is, if you need to make a leak about a new product coming next year, just one word. Well, uh, 25th anniversary. We'll have some special products to celebrate our 25th anniversary. <laughs> okay. That's Actually, that's, I know that's two words, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for your time, Scott. Thank you very much. You My pleasure. To Thank you. Have another interview with you, maybe in the next event or CES, Please, uh, anytime. When, when you can, came and stop by here in the Silicon Valley once again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you coming. Too. We really appreciate it.